Hey, good morning, everybody. Kirk Johnson, Saturday morning live on behalf of Ann Sig and Brian Cummings and all the staff, faculty, trainers, and members here at the e-commerce business school. Good Saturday morning. If you want to write in the box that all the electrons are looking good to you, that would be awesome. Lisa has joined. Lisa, sound and video looking okay to you? Uh, scrambled here at the last minute. So anyway, let us know. Um, Brian Cummings is in the house. Welcome, everybody. It's really, really great to have you here. I'll introduce this young lady in just a moment. Um, but I do want to welcome all of our new members as people continue. Thank you, Candida. That's awesome. Hi, Jean Day. Welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, everybody's saying hi, Kathleen. Get some thing, thumbs up. So anyway, uh, I'm Coach Kurt Johnson with the E-Commerce Business School, and I just want to welcome all the new members into the E-Commerce Business School. We have uh, different ways that people come into that. The thing that's really hot right now is the print-on-demand, and so all of you new print-on-demand members, welcome, welcome. We just finished a 10-day accountability boot camp, and that was just so much, so much fun. But today, what we're going to be doing on Saturday morning mornings uh, here and there and series and periodically is just bringing you really great training because we have such a full faculty and staff here at the e-commerce business school there's so much wisdom and so much talent that we want to share that with everybody and so today we have Kathleen Cleary she is a trained copywriter been working with Ann Sieg and e-commerce business school uh, for a long time she's been writing uh, e um, copywriting material for over 33 years Kathleen you put that in your bio you're kind of giving your age away there but <laughs> after training <laughs> After training with Ann Sieg in e-commerce business school to learn how to effectively sell products on Amazon and other online sites, she decided to combine her e-commerce marketing knowledge and her copy. I'm reading this. I know you can tell. Um, copywriting skills to help e-commerce sellers close visitors into sales and max out the profitability of their Amazon or Shopify sales funnels. Kathleen's copy project for e-commerce business school as members have included weekly newsletter, email campaign, sales pages, offer pages. <laughs> product listing, landing pages, special reports. Uh, yeah, you've probably written 10,000 emails, Kathleen. And so we really <laughs> love working with you in the community. And so if you want to say anything else about yourself personally before we get going here and let me know when you want me to hit the first slide of your training today, that would be great. I'll do the slides for you. So welcome, Kathleen. I really appreciate you taking the time to share some of your wisdom with us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kurt. Appreciate that. And yes, I've been in the community for many years and have enjoyed working uh, with the members and certainly for 8020. And, um, you know, it's been a great fit for me to match those uh, marketing knowledge with the, all the training that I've been through with um, uh, the EBS school. And this is exciting. The new I, like, I love this new concept of Saturday morning live trainings and bringing value to members. All right, you ready to rock and roll? So uh, if you want, we can jump right into it. Okay, here's your Sure, first let's slide. rock and roll. Okay. Am I seeing it? Should I be seeing that? Uh, there's a delay, Kathleen. So oh, okay. you, you just assume <laughs> okay. the recording all turns out right live. It's a little bit funky because of all the technology stack we have lined up. But when you say the next okay. slide, just assume people are seeing it while we're talking and we're good to go. Okay, so are, are we just on the introductory three, nine slide? Nine easy ways to write products. Oh, okay, right. sorry, oh, sorry. All, <laughs> right. all right, very all right. good. So that's, Rock, yeah. <laughs> that's the topic of the day, nine <laughs> easy ways to write product descriptions that sell. And if you move to the next um, slide, okay. I'm Keywords. assuming here in this training that, um, yes, that the keyword research has been done. In other words, um, before you write your product description, you, you're going to want to search for what words are your buyers most likely using when they're um, seeking your product. And you're going to, whether you're using a free tool or the, like an Amazon search bar, Google or Merchant Words, you've done the research and figured out the most commonly used words for what you're selling. Then you're going to be putting those words certainly in your title. In the case of Amazon, your most important keywords are going in the title and they're going in the back end search terms. And then when you write your product description, you're going to sprinkle in those keywords in a user friendly way so that it's, it reads smoothly and, and friendly. And if you move to the next slide, Kurt, 
should be what's a product description. So basically, a product description is marketing copy that describes a product and why someone should buy it. And it provides features and benefits to the buyer. And let's move along. Um, so it's the same whether you're writing an Amazon product listing, um, you're gonna have a title description bullets, or next slide just shows an example of the Shopify product description. A lot of the members are currently creating um, print on demand stores using Shopify as their platform and moving into other marketplaces. But your product descriptions are gonna go, um, you, you're gonna want them in both places. So the first of the nine easy ways to write a, a good product description, you wanna focus on your ideal buyer. Did you move to that one? Okay, great. So um, the best product descriptions address your ideal buyer directly and personally. You can um, ask and answer questions as if you're having a conversation with them and choose words that your ideal buyer uses. And you certainly wanna use the word you. Uh, my particular niche is um, crafters. That's my Crafters Closets of America is my Shopify store. So this particular shirt says um, knitting is a work of heart. And, um, you know, you want to be um, identifying with your audience. With print on demand, it's a little different than if you're just selling a product on Amazon that it can go to anybody. With print on demand, you, you have a chosen niche and you're speaking to an audience, so they're identifying with you. On the next slide, this is a weekender tote that I have um, on my site. And I, I apologize, with, when, when I was screen sh try, trying to take the screenshots, it, the image and the description are a little apart, so I'm cutting off the images. But um, in this situation, you want to paint a picture so your buyer can see themselves, you know, enjoying the benefits and use of your product. So the description I have here is this is my perfect day in MA, Massachusetts is where I live, oversized weekender tote for Massachusetts knitters is perfect for your weekend away with your knitting buddies in the city, the country, or at the beach. Um, the wide mouth durable bag holds a generous amount of personal items as well as your knitting projects and is easily held by its thick rope handles. So, you know, I'm throwing in there um, for the knitters and we, I go, I travel with um, knitting friends and, you know, we, I definitely can identify with being together, we've been in cities, beaches, whatever. So I'm using my own personal experience, knowing what, you know, people in the niche do. And um, so I've thrown in those copies, copy words. Um, if we move to the next one, this is an example from ThinkGeek. They're describing an LED flashlight that they have. And it reads, you know what's sucky about regular flashlights? They only come in two colors, white and that yellowish white that reminds us of the teeth of an avid coffee drinker. What fun is that kind of flashlight? We'll answer that. No fun at all. You know what is fun? Using the multicolor LED flashlight to cast a sickly green glow over your face while telling a zombie story around a campfire. No campfire? Make a fake one with the orange light. So this was an example I grabbed off of Shopify Academy's blog and it has lots of personality. It, it, you know, you can read it, feel it. Um, if you go to the next slide, Kurt, um, these are things to think about when you're talking to your ideal customer, you know, what words would my customer use? What questions can you answer? Is she okay with words like sucky and crappy? You might have an audience that that's not gonna work for at all. So it's really important to be knowing your audience, use their lingo and the words that are gonna resonate with them. Let's bounce to the next one. Hey Kathleen, before you go on to point number two, I'm just gonna check in with our audience sure. here. Hey, welcome everybody in case you rolled in late. This is Coach Kurt with e-commerce business school and Kathleen Clary. We're doing some training here on Saturday morning live and my Facebook uh, monitor kind of froze up. So if someone would let me know or even text me that things are okay, that would be awesome. Um, seems like everything's okay except my Facebook feed. So, um, and if you do wanna know more, if you gotta run now or whatever, you can put any comments in the box there. We'll do some Q&A hopefully at the end if my Facebook thing lightens up here. Um, or you can just type in for now. We'll have a different call to action or what I, we're going to show you how you can get a hold of Kathleen if you want to. But anyway, go to joinebs.com, www.joinebs.com. And I'll go ahead and put that in the panel too. So yeah, on to point number 
two, Kathleen. <laughs> All righty. So number two is attract and entice with benefits. And this is an example coming from Method Home. And it was during the holidays, a gel hand wash. Um, so their subhead is a lot of secret handshakes start over the holidays. And the copy reads, sometimes the scent of seasonal hand wash is all we need to rouse our holiday spirits. Available an array of festive fragrances, our naturally derived gel hand wash will leave your hands soft, clean and ready to be tucked into a pair of fair aisle mittens. It really is the most wonderful time of the year. So they're suggesting not only are your hands going to be soft and clean, but that the soap rouses your holiday spirit and makes the holidays more fun and festive. So when you're thinking about your own products, you want to think, does it make someone happier or healthier or more productive? Am I solving a problem or eliminating some kind of hassle? So in essence, you, you want to um, use your benefits, but sell an experience. So it, it goes beyond just being a product. If you bounce to the next one, number three, it, it is avoid the same old yeah, yeah phrases. So, you know, blah things like we have excellent product quality. In essence, you want to infer the quality of your product by using benefit oriented features. So on the next slide, I chose to use um, an example from Kay Curtis's uh, Best Genealogy Gifts, her Shopify store. And um, in her description, she's written, enjoy a smile every time you use this I'm a time traveler genealogy latte mug, especially on those late nights working to discover more about your family tree. Again, she's identifying with what she knows people who are into genealogy do, and they can spend many hours doing their research. So whether you drink your co coffee, hot chocolate, or water, it's a perfect special genealogy cup. This durable ceramic latte mug with high quality sublimation printing makes it a gift appreciated by any hot or cold beverage drinker. So she's used her um, feature, durable ceramic latte. That It's a ceramic mug, it's durable, and it's got high quality sublimation printing. So she's describing what it is that makes it a, a better product. If you um, bounce to the next one, this is an example from Zappos, the shoe seller. And as you see, they've got it kind of down just in their uh, bullet point format. And they it's a really good example of um, looking at features and then um, explaining why the feature offers the benefit. So on the second one down here, the angelfish uh, captures classic boat shoe style in a feminine design. So, you know, the sense that it's women would, would feel comfortable and about the design. Genuine hand-sewn construction for durable comfort. The hand-sewn construction is your feature, but it offers you durable comfort. Uh, the next feature, stain and water-resistant leather upper, gives you durable and lasting wear. So each one of these is, starts with the feature, but ro rolls it right into the benefit and why a buyer would um, want to be buying this product. Um, on the next slide, Kurt, number four, um, this is justify your use of superlatives. So if you're going to suggest that you have the best, the fastest, the coolest, the most popular, the most advanced, you want to use facts that justify why you're making that claim. And this is Amazon's own um, description of the Kindle Paperweight, Paperweight and why it's the most advanced e-reader. So right in those bullets, you see that um, the word patented, that in itself suggests it's special. You know, um, They're using percentages. Paper White has 62% more pixels for brilliant resolution. So your feature is the pixels and the benefit is that brilliant resolution. Um, and the last line in this one, even in bright sunlight, Paper White delivers clear, crisp text text and images with no glare. It's just a rock solid benefit. Anybody that's tried to read their reader out in the sunshine can understand that, you know, wow, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So let's bounce down to number five. Hey, Kathleen, and this I'm one, interrupt you again. Apologize yeah. just momentarily. I yep, adjusted no my mic settings, so I'm hoping I'll come through a little bit louder, getting some feedback. Thank you, Judith. Welcome. Hey, 
Lots of people joining us here this morning. Oh, in case nice. you're jumping in here live, this is Coach Kirk Johnson with E-Commerce Business School. On behalf of Ann Sieg and all of us here, um, this is Saturday morning live, and we're doing some training, and we'll have <clears throat> hopefully some Q&A here at the end of it. This is Kathleen Cleary giving some great tips and training on copywriting as it uh, 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 pertains to you creating your listing. So thank you, Kathleen. A little pause there. Carry on. Very good. Okay, so number five, appeal to your reader's imagination. This is um, this example comes from Think Geek, and it reads: There's a person who's the hero of every barbecue or family cookout, and that is the grill master. We always looked up to mom or dad as they tended the grill and looked forward to the day when we could be in charge of charring the meat stuff and searing delicious slices of fresh pineapple. Now that we're adults, it's finally our turn, and technology has smiled upon us, giving us a tool that is destined to impress. And I apologize because I grabbed this description and I forgot to um, show the product, but it's a grilling tool. <laughs> so, and it's it, obviously, it puts the uh, reader you know, in front of the grill, and it, it adds the emotion of being the grill master for the family. So it goes way beyond just, you know, hey, we have a great thing to help your grilling. It also uh, making me looking forward to lunch, Kathleen. Yeah, <laughs> it does. You, you know, you can start to salivate just reading this. So. <laughs> okay, number six, um, use mini stories when appropriate. And um, this is an example. I'm, the next slide will show the description. This comes from um, our members, the Baalbeck family, and their um, store is Fostering Com. So they sell products for um, parents who adopt children that have sensory um, processing issues. So if we go to the next um, slide, this is the description for that product that we were just looking at. And if and so if you look at the the middle paragraph, the story reads: It's nearing bedtime. You start to dread the process. Is there not anything that might help with the bedtime routine? The going to sleep, the staying asleep, or maybe you have a little one that's anxious throughout the day. There's help. No, not medications. You want a non-invasive natural alternative, a weighted blanket. And so they're in essence, truly identifying with the audience that would be interested in this product. They understand they have um, the uh, children that they use these products for and they know what the daily routine is. So they're writing a story that a buyer can certainly identify with and think, yes, that's what I need. Um, I think in this situation, they probably could format this a little better with a, some more paragraphs or perhaps some bolding. And later on, when we talk about mobile, um, it'll be apparent why that would be people. This That is a long paragraph. And sometimes when you have a big block of copy, um, a reader just kind of blanks out like, oh, that's work, you know, but if it's formatted and scannable, it would be easier. But the story, it, I think, is great. Um, let's bounce down to the next number seven. And it's titillate with sensory words. So adjectives can certainly be tricky. If your product can be described as sensory adjectives, it helps the reader experience the product with power words such as crunch, smooth, bright, crisp. And let's go to the next one, which is an example of this. This comes from um, the chocolate maker, Green and Black. And the top part is showing, which is so true, restaurants have known that using sensory words can increase their sales because you're engaging more for brain processing power. And I, hopefully I can read this. A bar of wonderful uh, distinctions, if there ever was one. Crunchy toffee and smooth dark chocolate, treacly and savory flavors. It's evocative to say the least, but that's why you're drawn to it in the first place. So really going you know, into the senses here. Uh, let's bounce to the next one, Kurt. Number eight. So this is a tract with social proof. So besides having, you know, um, positive reviews, you can do like this um, online furniture, made.com. They're um, sneaking in social proof with a press piece. And something else you can do is you, if you've got testimonials on your website, um, add pictures of whoever gave you the testimonial, and then you've just amped up the credibility um, because, you, you know, it's authentic. Um, in this situation, they've, uh, the quote under the, from the customer service rep says, 
the piggy bag bean bags are far and away some of our most popular pieces. People can't seem to get enough of them. They look really good bought as a pair or three in different colors. So there's some suggestive selling going on. Don't buy one, buy two or three. And, um, and then they're using the press piece to um, add the credibility there. And the next slide, Kurt, um, make your description scannable. So that's what I was talking about earlier. The, in this situation, you know, they've got um, bullet points, they've spaced out um, the, some of those features and benefits. They've, they're using color, you know, making it really, really easy to read. And uh, let's bounce down to, the next one's just sort of a, uh, reinforces that. So, so if you focus on an enticing headline or title, use your bullet points, lots of white space, and then you can um, increase your font size to um, promote the um, readability. And the next slide, Kurt, should be description guidelines. So and this is um, really important because the way people are shopping is changing and more and more people are using mobile. And in mobile, as opposed to when we're used to like at Amazon, if we're on our desktop, we see the title, we see the bullet points down lower is the description, but on mobile, your description actually shows up first. Um, and you can use formatting like a, you know, paragraph, start, stop paragraph. So you get the breaks or start, stop, bold. The first 200 characters in Amazon are the most impactful in terms of search. You know, the words that you're using that you, your buyers are most likely likely to be using. You want to throw in the details, the features, size, weight, et cetera, and use that sales copy and stories like we've been seeing in these previous um, slides. Um, the next slide is an example actually on mobile. This came from Dr. Josie Shepard in a recent training. And so with the description, you can see that she's got um, some white space. She started with the bold, great gift, um, bring some romance into that special person's life with a Valentine's Day gift that says it all. She or he will know how you feel about her every morning as she drinks that first cup of coffee. Brilliant crisp printing on a pure white ceramic mug and original design available only from Red Cat, Cat Dreams. So she's identifying her brand and her business. Um, so it's, this, you know, when you're on mobile, you definitely don't want to have that long drawn out descriptions that it, it takes a long time to scroll through because you're just going to lose the um, the reader slash buyer. You want them to buy your product. So this is a perfect way of, and her down below that, the bullet points, um, and she's got them started with capitals and it goes through features and benefits all the way through. Um, there is a tool, the next slide. Um, this was a tool again that I learned about from Dr. Josie Shepard. Um, you know, when you, a lot of us write our descriptions in a Word doc or, you know, or some kind of word processing document. And if you just copy and paste it into like an Amazon product description, you end up with all these odd characters and you lo lose your formatting. And this tool, Word to Clean HTML, all you have to do is copy your description from your word processing document right in there. And then you click that convert to clean HTML and it it keeps all the formatting just the way you want. Um, the next slide, I believe, is the website. That's the website. Um, it's Word 2, the digit 2, clean HTML. Really, really great tool that I didn't know about. So I wanted to share that it's out there and it makes life easier. And I think that takes care of our nine easy ways. The last slide is just uh, it's a picture of um, the dashboard in our back office. And under tools and resources, um, there's a page where there's a little learn more button. So if somebody was interested in um, having a complimentary consultation to discuss any copywriting issues they may have, just go to the back office to tools and resources. And awesome. open for questions. Awesome. Yeah. Great, great training, Kathleen. Thanks so much. We will get to some Q&A in just a moment, but we're going to let them know how to get into that back office since they're not yet. You can join the e-commerce business school community absolutely free. Go to www.joinebs.com. In addition to Kathleen's training here, there's other free training, complimentary training, and of course, paid trainings and mentoring and so on and so forth. We're a results-driven mentoring community. And so all that's available.
available. But if you'd like more of what Kathleen is doing or hire her services or anything like that, feel free to do that. We'll make that again announcement after we do some Q&A. Hopefully there's some Q&A. Be thinking of some things that you'd like to put in the panel there. Um, and even if you're watching this recording, you're not live with us, even though this is Saturday morning live with Coach Kurt in the e-commerce business school, um, go ahead and we'll be sure to be watching that and help you out and moving forward. So, but in the meantime, I'll go back to the Q&A slide and go on over to the question and answer box here. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to be notified of Saturday Morning Lives, you can put add me or just yes in the comment section also, and you'll know when we do these. We'll be doing them almost every Saturday, but maybe not everyone, and so you'll be sure to be pinged and reminded. Okay, Judith Calhoun says, looks good. Jean Day McCarthy says, good tips, Kathleen. Candida says, thank you, Kathleen. Great job. Awesome, awesome. Um, Kathleen, uh, I have a question. Um, when I wrote description, do you notice some words that might not be apropos? We're waiting for other people maybe to ask a question or two. Are there any um, negative words that you shouldn't use um, even beyond? Uh, are, are there things that you should try to avoid when writing descriptions? I got flagged for a bad word one time. So um, just, <laughs> just wonder. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely um, want to be conscious of uh, you know, words and their appropriateness and whether they like Amazon, you know, or, and Facebook, I mean, not that you write a product description there necessarily, but you've got to be careful about um, the words that you choose. And there's also the concept of um, negative keywords. There are sometimes words that you don't want to use. This is more um, I'm thinking about in promotions and advertising. There's words that um, you definitely don't want to use because somebody could use it in a search when it really doesn't apply to your product. And so you want to, um, in when you're right, uh, doing your campaign, there's a way to identify words that you don't want to have used as search terms for your product. I don't know if that's making sense, but um, it's easier when we're looking at how to set up a campaign. But you, it, it could be that a word is used a lot in a search, but if it's not relevant to what you're selling, you don't want that word um, to be in your ad or in a search, uh, uh, indexed for search, right. you know, so. That's more advanced it, adding negative yeah. keywords. Sure, sure. Yes. You know, I yeah, was for surprised, sure. I read somewhere, um, maybe because I'm I'm not typically this way, even though I've become more and more savvy buyer, uh, that I am reading lots of descriptions. Now, I didn't used to. I just go, oh, there it is, and I bought it. But well <laughs> over half of the people on Amazon, before they buy something, they are doing uh, comparative shopping. It's not like, yes. just, oh, bam, grab it off the shelf. I mean, they're they're savvy buyers, and, and they, they read these descriptions, don't they? They do indeed, yeah. And I think um, since especially if you're creating a brand, then that whole identifying with your audience becomes really important because let's face it, it's it, the no like and trust factor is going to drive a person's decision to buy from somebody. And so if you can create an audience and um, have a relationship and, you know, if you're working on a POD store and um, or, or selling a private label product, you want to create your own list and have a relationship and maybe you're using social media to uh, post and identify with them and or email campaigns and cart abandonment campaigns and all these different touch points that you can use. You can't do that in Amazon, but you certainly can if you're building an audience and, um, you know, that people know, like, and trust you, they're much more likely to be interested in your product and, you know, have a look and see if it's something that's going to meet their needs. Awesome. Okay, we're going to go over to the panel here, Kathleen. Um, thanks, Kathleen. That resource, Word to Clean, solves a problem I've had for years. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. All right, Kurt, like your name there. Judith, um, words to exclude. We just covered that. Um, Roderick uh, says, words like sublimation printing can be very confusing. Mm -hmm. I spent several minutes wondering what that is and why it's a benefit for the average uh, buyer. There's a comment and a question in there in terms of what, what I guess, uh, complexity of words, you know. I remember yeah. one friend just loved using these big words and every once in a while I'd say, 
I don't even know what that is. You know, right. you, have, you have to be cautious of that in product description. That's true. That's true. And perhaps um, a more, a little definition after sublimation, if you're going to use the term sublimation or, you know, perhaps a definition of what that is, or just use it in a more basic description so that people can understand and not, you know, if, if you do read something, you don't get it, it it's not going to motivate you to be buying something. So yeah, if you can bring down the copy into a level that most people are going to understand, it's um, much more persuasive to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kathleen, I don't see any other questions in the box there. My electronics are flowing properly here. Thank you for taking the time to share. So it is really, really, really important yeah. uh, in terms of communicate. Communication is just so key in so many things. So if you would like to know more about the e-commerce business school and it's a free membership and the entry road to access Kathleen and our other coaches and trainers and programs and all of that, you can go to www.joinebs.com. Dot com. There's a free membership. There's some free training. I encourage you to jump through some of those hoops. If you jump through some of those hoops, you're even eligible for uh, some mentoring and a 10-day accountability boot camp and, you know, so on and so forth. So we're here at the e-commerce business school to help you on your journey in that way. Be looking forward ahead for more Saturday morning live. So before I say thank you again and um, goodbye to everybody. Kathleen, any last comments, thoughts, or words that you'd like to share? Well, it's been a pleasure uh, being here today. And um, yeah, if anybody, you know, I'm happy. I, I am doing check and adjust every other Tuesday now. So it's an easy way for members to better um, qualified for the check and adjust calls to um, get in touch and ask questions and certainly happy to have a consultation with anyone to answer questions. Okay, guys. Well, come on in. The water's fine if you're not part of the uh, e-commerce business school community, www.joinebs.com. If you'd like to be notified of the Saturday morning lives uh, free trainings, just go ahead and put add me in the box there. If you have questions, Kathleen and I will keep our eye on this thread along with our great staff. And if anything comes along, um, yeah, we will, we will help you if you're listening to this recording later. So thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your Saturday and weekend. Bye, everybody. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.